But let's get rolling. Uh, good evening, everyone. I call the December 13th special meeting of the Arizona Board of Regents to order. Uh, Rachel, would you please confirm that we have a quorum? Yes, Chair Duval, we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, this evening, we will convene an executive session for a review of assignments with our executive director, John Arnold. At approximately 535, the board will resume the public meeting to hear items listed on its agenda. Please note, when the board resumes the public meeting, there will be a new live stream link posted on the board's website under ABOR Live. At the conclusion of the public meeting, the board will reconvene in executive session for a review of assignments with President Robbins. At the conclusion of executive session, the board will adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion to enter into executive session? So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify second. with Aye. Aye. Any Aye. Opposed? The motion Aye. carries. The, the board will now convene an executive session. Please stand by. Very good. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, good evening. We um, have called this meeting to order a few minutes ago uh, prior to our uh, executive session. Uh, but Rachel, I'd like to ask, can you please uh, confirm that we still have a quorum? Yes, Chair Newell, we still have a quorum. Terrific. Um, our first item of business is to discuss the situation at the University of Arizona. And we all know that we are facing a very serious financial issue there. I've asked uh, Director Arnold and President Robbins to report on that issue. Uh, but before doing so, I'd like to take a moment to discuss the nature of the issues that we face. The U of A's financial problem was first presented as an unseen and dramatic reduction in days cash on hand. While that's a concerning problem in and of itself, the decline of the university's cash reserves was a symptom of two other more serious problems. One, an ongoing budget deficit at the university, and two, a financial and reporting structure at the university and also at the board level that did not identify the problem sooner. Today, we intend to take the first steps to turn the ship around at the University of Arizona and to assure our campuses and the public that this will not happen again in Tucson or at any of our state's universities. And to assure that the university can go forward successfully, we must address both its budget and its management procedures. And we must address ours as well. And let me make it clear, this board won't let up on its responsibilities until we do. I've asked Director Arnold to review the board's operating principles and reporting structure. In response, his team, along with university leadership, have developed a report with a number of recommendations to strengthen the financial structures of all of Arizona's universities and to establish a measuring and reporting structure that will provide better information for the presidents and this board. When we were first made aware of the problems at UA earlier this fall, the board also instructed President Robbins to review the University of Arizona's financial situation and report on the immediate steps that he would take to address the university's ongoing financial issues. We will discuss the systemic management issues with Director Arnold first. We will then move to the University of Arizona and President Robbins. Before turning to Director Arnold, I'd like to ask the board if there are any comments or questions from uh, fellow regions. Regent Penley. Uh, thank you very much, Chair Duvall. I, I appreciate how you've laid out the, the issue in terms of framing two components of the financial issues at the University of Arizona and with the board. Uh, we have no choice, of course, to address the immediacy of the financial issues. However, we also have a responsibility to put structures in place to guard against stresses in the long term and to also enhance the university's capacity to be responsible to the needs of the state of Arizona. We cannot rely, unfortunately, on past practices uh, nor on talented people. Uh, we have a governance responsibility, and that means that we have to implement tools, structures, and policies to support our three presidents and our three public universities in the state of Arizona. Those are very complex universities, and they become, they're becoming increasingly complex. The board needs appropriate tools for us to govern that level of complexity that we have in these three public universities. Thanks, Chair Duvall. Thank you, Regent Penley. 
Um, John, over to you. Would you please introduce this item? Sure. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, I, I, I really appreciate uh, your comments, Regent Penley's comments, um, and, and the opportunity to, to look into this. Um, the, the Board of Regents exercises financial oversight of the university through uh, policy governance and, and financial reporting. So we, we review both of those uh, aspects of, of board uh, oversight. And after review of our current policies and practices, we believe there are some steps that the board can take to approve our oversight. I'm going to talk about these steps in, in four different, said steps a lot, I apologize. We'll talk about it as four separate steps. So step number one, uh, we're, we recommend that the, the board adopt additional financial management principles to guide university practice. Um, listing those out, uh, one, require a centralized or university-wide planning and budgeting process, uh, require a centralized management and control of, of information uh, technology, uh, require budgetary controls on the individual budget units of the universities, uh, require additional budgetary controls on non-resident financial aid, uh, adopt additional requirements, including board approval to expend cash reserves past certain levels, and, and finally, uh, add additional transparency in, in our budget communication. So we're recommending that the board put those principles into policy so they can inform the university level budgetary and financial practices. In addition to, addition to governance principles, step two is some additional financial reporting. Our, our current reporting structure is appropriately built around the university financial cycle. Uh, we require a May forecast for the upcoming year, an update against that forecast in October after we have fall enrollment and fall revenues, and then a second update in January after we have uh, the, the winter uh, revenues and enrollments, and then a closeout process for that prior fiscal year in, in the spring. And, and this system has largely worked to provide the board with timely information. Fortunately, it did not catch this problem until later in the process. Uh, so we are recommending two additional reports. One, a monthly operating cash report that will identify trends in spending and, and highlight any unusual spending fluctuations. And then two, a mid-year financial update that compares revenue and expenditures to date versus prior year and historical spending patterns. Both of these reports will be designed to help the universities and the board identify any unknown or unusual spending trends. Third, um, we're recommending an enhanced quality assurance of, of our university financial processes. Uh, we can ask for all the reporting in the world, but unless we have some insurance that that reporting is coming out of a system that is sound, we don't know if those reports are any good. Uh, so we are recommending two steps. One, a peer review process uh, that includes a visiting review team made up of uh, members from the other two universities and the board office. This team will go into the 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 assessed university and will assess the quality of the university's financial structure and their processes. This, this uh, review team process will not only provide the board with assurance that the required principles are being implemented correctly, it will better foster communication and learning between the three universities and the board office. Uh, second, we're recommending an annual summit well, I love the word, but you get the idea of uh, of our university CFOs, the ABOR office, and other relevant financial staff. Again, to get together, share best practices, talk about issues, concerns, risks that they're facing, and learn from one another. Um, we, we think these two processes will also help us build talent inside of our universities as, as uh as individuals from NAU, UA, and ASU all interact and learn, learn from each other. 
Uh, finally, that's our fourth step, we're recommending uh, a, a university Arizona specific uh, reporting structure over the next uh, couple of years as uh, they move through this process of centralizing or building a university-wide budget uh, structure of their own um, and and uh, I, and uh, putting the, the recommendations from President Robbins into place and addressing their financial issues, we're, we're recommending a specific reporting structure for them as they move through that process. And with that, Mr. Chair, happy to take any questions or comments. Good, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Are there questions or comments for uh, our executive director? Regent Mata. Thank you, Chair Duvall. John, thank you for this presentation. Can you walk uh, us through the next steps and how quickly can we make these changes? Thank you, thank you Regent Mata. Um, great question. The, the, the document that, that you have in front of you that we're asking for you to, to approve it is, uh, is a concept paper. Um, with your approval, we will take that and develop policy um, that we will then bring back to the board, you know, refine all of this and, and so we can put it into the board's policy documents and then implement at the university level. I think we can have the some of the reporting structure available for this spring and then certainly through the course of fiscal 25. Um, some of the, the structural changes at the universities will take several months uh, to, to really implement. In terms of peer reviews and stuff, I think we can get that done. Uh, oh, I, the, the concept paper suggests we'll, we'll get the first round of peer reviews done over the next 12 months. So I, I think we can put that process into place fairly quickly. Thank you, John. Regent Herbold. John, uh, I really like what uh, we've generated here. I think it takes a lot of hard work, but uh, uh, well done. I, my question is in regard to whether we've gone far enough uh, in the accountability area. I think one of the things that's key as we go through these various initiatives is to make sure we're focusing on individuals, holding them responsible. Uh, if things fall short, there should be implications. Uh, if they get out of whack on procedures, there should be implications. Uh, those will be easy things to add on and to make sure that we tack uh, into the process uh, as we move forward. But uh, this is uh, a great set of initiatives that I think will, will serve us very well. Uh, th thank you, Regent Herbold. Um, agree with you and, and agree as we move into this and start implementing some of these things, there's likely to be additional initiatives that we need to bring forward. Uh, one thing I, I, I think we should address um, is, is ensuring that our financial officers have a, a more uh, university-wide mindset um, so they understand the implications of the spending decisions they're making at their individual unit levels. And instead of thinking about, I work for this unit level, they really think about how they work for the university and, and how all of this fits together into a, into a, a university-wide scope. I think that'll help us. Yeah, you know, there's no, uh, you know, worked for the state for a long time in the budget office and uh, having charge of public funds, whether they be student funds or university funds, you know, that that is uh, um, a significant public uh, trust that we put in these individuals. And, and we I think we can do more to help them understand that and and live up to that public trust. So thank you and look forward to working with you more on this, sir. Very good. Thank you, John. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, this is an action item. Uh, so I move that the board approve the University Financial Oversight and Enhancement and Expectations Report. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Second part of our meeting is turning to the University of Arizona and President Robbins to discuss the issues that he's been managing. President Robbins, over to you. Thank you, Chair Duvall, and thank you, Regents, for the opportunity to update you on university finances this evening. I promised all of you that I would dig in, and I've dug in. 
and I don't like everything that I've discovered. However, we've already made some very difficult decisions at the University of Arizona. I also need to report that we're just getting started and there will be additional steps the university will need to take. As you stated, cash on hand only reflects the overall health of the university financial situation. It's a symptom, not the core problem. And we will work to address the university's fine as we work to address the university's finance, we'll focus on the disease and not the symptoms. The action steps I'm presenting today attack the disease. These steps will not lead to an immediate increase in cash, but will address the problems causing the decreases in cash. Our financial difficulties are driven by two problems primarily. First, we have an ongoing budget deficit, meaning we are spending more than we are making. While we do not know the full scope of this issue yet, we are going to take a number of immediate steps to bring our budget back into alignment. We will implement an immediate hiring freeze. We will freeze international travel. We will place restrictions on purchasing. We will defer non-essential capital projects and we will pause strategic investments. Longer term, we will implement budget reductions for FY 2025. We will delay the planned salary increases. We will take a hard look at merit aid for non-resident students and likely will reduce that down. We're going to end the tuition guarantee program for students starting in the fall of 2025. The second problem we're dealing with is a decentralized budgeting allocation process and administrative structure that has led to the poor budget controls and ineffective administrative structure and overspending in some of our budget units. To address this, we will replace our existing budget system with a centralized system. Our plan is to hire a firm that specializes in this space to help us design a strong system with a appropriate budget and expenditure controls and accountability. We will centralize our finance and information technology functions and look at centralizing several additional administrative functions. This work will take some time, but it will begin immediately. In fact, it already has begun with a change in financial leadership at the university. Earlier today, I accepted the resignation of Senior Vice President for Business Affairs and Chief Financial Officer Lisa Rolney. I want to acknowledge Lisa for her work and dedication to this great university over the past 22 years. Moving forward, I have asked Regent Duvall, and he has graciously agreed to let us use the expertise of ABOR Executive Director John Arnold for the next few months as the University of Arizona's Interim Chief Financial Officer and Senior Vice President for Business Affairs. John has an exceptional background in disciplined financial management and education. He's a proven track record of leadership for both the Arizona Board of Regents and for the state of Arizona. John is no stranger to highly complex and challenging financial matters, having served as Governor Jan Brewer State Budget Director a role in which he provided fiscal direction and solutions during the Great Recession and managed state budgets in excess of $25 billion. Perhaps more importantly, I've had the pleasure of serving with John in higher education since I was named the president of the University of Arizona. And I admire deeply his integrity, leadership, and effectiveness. I know it's no big ask of all of you and I'm truly grateful to the entire board and to John personally for considering and approving this request. Now to settle some concerns and rumors that have been circulated in public discussions, I want to talk about what we are not doing. We will not reduce need-based aid for Arizona students. I cannot state this strongly enough. We support the Promise Program, and we will continue to provide that support. We will not reduce aid of any kind to currently accepted qualifying students. We made promises to our students and we will keep those promises. We will not reduce retirement benefits. We will not institute furloughs and we will not jeopardize our teaching and research missions. 
If I can make one last comment on athletics, as I've said many times before, athletics is the most difficult part of the university's budget. I also believe that athletics is a core part of the University of Arizona and key element to our long-term success. I have had many great meetings with the athletics department and we are committed to putting together a multi-year plan in place to bring their budget into balance. This will include a review of ticket pricing, opportunities to mat maximize media rights and philanthropy and consolidating administrative function functions within the university. With that, Chairman Duvall, I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Thank you, President Robbins. Um, if I can, let me just begin with, with a comment. The board very much appreciates that the enormous work that you and your team have had to put into this report and this uh, this matter urgently, and, and you have done that, and we appreciate uh, the extent of the work and, and want to make a particular note, appreciate the degree of consultation that you've engaged with with so many of your partners in the shared governance space, the faculty senate, SPEBAC, Gary Rhodes' committee, and the other parts of the university that have all offered their help and their suggestions, and, and I think the consultation is serving you well. We recognize that this problem didn't develop overnight. It won't be solved overnight. Uh, the remedies that you're proposing um, seem designed to really right the ship, but without doing harm to the core mission of the university. They're meaningful, uh, scaled, uh, but appropriately aggressive, um, and we appreciate that. And I, I want to double down on something you said, as important as the many steps that you are taking are these steps that you are not taking. So they bear repeating. We will not cut financial aid to Arizona students. We will not uh, change aid or tuition pricing for existing students. We will not touch retirement or benefit commitments. And we will not have systemic furloughs. I think those are important principles. They, they are core to the plan. They have our support. We cannot lose sight of our principal responsibility to improve on the opportunities uh, for and the success of our Arizona students. Um, so these, these are important red lines. Um, Mr. President, I must say, I, I find this to really be sort of a, a split screen moment. The, the financial issue is so significant. The institution has uh, erred over many years and over many presidents to properly manage its books. But I, I know you share this, that regardless of how we got here together, we are going to fix it. Um, but I say split screen because there's so much good going on at the University of Arizona. We, record research, record enrollment, record philanthropy, uh, and we want to retain as much momentum as possible towards your strategic plan. So I guess my question is, as you move deeper into these budget corrections, can you share with us your thoughts and plans as to how we do that, what guides your thinking, and how we stay on track with the strategic mission uh, that we are so invested in as we go through these difficult transitions? Yeah, thank you, Chair Duvall. I, I very much appreciate your guidance and the opportunity to address the financial issues we've identified. Uh, I guess I would say prior to adopting the strategic plan, we had intentionally built up cash reserves to address, uh, to invest in strategic initiatives, particularly advancing students and research. And we, we, we've achieved record results in both of those areas. However, we did not maintain the balance nor properly track and, and match actual costs uh, with actual revenues. I, I regret that investments in the strategic plan have gotten so associated with the university's larger, larger financial issues uh, because I, I firmly believe in the principles we've put in place. These initiatives have greatly advanced the lives of students and their success, as well as our research mission. As we right size spending, we're going to have to look at what has worked, what is really moving the university forward, and what has not worked. Things that are not working will have to be abandoned. One example of what is working is the amazing progress in retaining our students. This is an example that I certainly do not want us to see uh, go backwards on in that progress. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from Regents? Regent Herbold? Yeah, I want to comment on uh, 
the overall tone here, I think, is fabulous. Uh, our goal is to tackle the bloat and the overspending, and I think that uh, this will do a great job in uh, enabling us to match things better to our our goals, our strategic initiatives, as you just mentioned. Uh, once we get the uh, systems under control and the spending under control, that matching can happen a heck of a lot more easily. So uh, I think that uh, uh, this needs to be supplemented with uh, what we mentioned earlier in regard to accountability to make sure these things happen. But uh, these are very encouraging steps. Well, Re Regent Herbal, I, I agree with you completely. We, we've got to get a handle on, on this situation and we're going to attack uh, that on two fronts. First, we're going to reduce the administrative duplication inside the university by centralizing a number of the administrative functions. Centralizing those functions will also bring us additional insight into uh, control over the budget within units. Secondly, uh, I'm working with our staff on how we can bring more accountability to, to university leaders. And I have some ideas in mind that we're working on to do just that. Thank you, President Robbins. Other comments or questions? Regent Bentley? Uh, thanks very much, uh, Chair Deval. Uh, and thank you, President Robbins, for your presentation today. In our last meeting, uh, I commented that you were going to face some very difficult decisions. Like Regent Herbold, I'm very encouraged by what you've said here tonight, what you've reported. It is apparent that you're taking action and making the essential decisions, the immediate changes that must be made. You understand at this point the wonderful history and the roles of the University of Arizona. We have an opportunity, I believe, in the decisions that you are going to make and this board is going to make to really recenter the university on its essential character. We have an opportunity to refocus the University of Arizona on its mission as a great research university with excellence, especially in the basic and applied sciences and how it serves Arizona with that excellence. Please be thoughtful as you make your strategic decisions. I anticipate you will, but nonetheless, I feel like I need to say that. This fine university represents something important to all of us in Arizona. We hope that we look forward to it fulfilling the hope that we have for this university on the other side of the financial stress that we're seeing today. I know you'll be thoughtful about the strategic impacts as you make these decisions, but I can't help but encourage that as we move forward. The university is a promise to the people of Arizona. It's a promise of a better future. The state has depended on the University of Arizona for an educated workforce and for the kind of generation of new knowledge that addresses our greatest global challenges it serves very special needs of a unique Western state that sits in a very fragile desert environment. I fear at times in our attempts to serve so many constituencies that we may have drifted from the central mission of the University of Arizona. You're a surgeon. You've talked to me in the past about the responsibilities that you felt which were enormous when you were in that operating room. You focused, I know, and I know your character, on making sure that you healed that patient, that you, you made life and death decisions as you were in there with the patient on the table. We have at this point an opportunity to make essential decisions that will rebuild the life of the University of Arizona and refocus it. I know you'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Finley. Uh, we we will be purposeful, thoughtful, and careful. Uh, as uh, as you know, in my former profession, uh, first of all, do no harm. Uh, again, I appreciate your trust, and I will work with each of you to make sure changes we make will help us move forward toward the shared aspirational vision of this board. I love this university, and like you, 
I want to see see it be all that it can, and I will do everything I can to get us there, uh, which means that we need to uh, continue to focus our investments on our students and our research mission. Thanks, President Robbins. Any other uh, comments or questions from members of the board? All right, this is not an action item, it is a report uh, and appreciate getting it. Uh, I do wanna close this uh, meeting with just a few final points. Um, we've all made mistakes that have brought us to this point. Uh, that includes the board, the president, the central budget offices and the many decentralized budget offices around the university. We've all allowed it to happen and we must all now fix it. Uh, we're a public university, we serve the public and we owe the public both Chair Duval, I believe your audio froze. Updating the board and specifically to provide us a full multi-year financial modeling of the plan at our scheduled February meeting. Um, secondly, I'm asking and designating our operations chair, Regent Mata, and our audit chair, Regent Herbal, to take the lead on the board uh, during the plan implementation. Um, we have tabled item three on today's agenda, and so that concludes today's public meeting. I want to thank everyone for their time and their participation. The, the board will now convene an executive session for a review of assignments with President Robbins. Uh, Regents and everyone else participating in the executive session, please log off this Zoom uh, and move to the, uh, to the other Zoom site. Thanks again for everyone. For